Okay, he can do it. This. Just do it, show me. Okay, oh, they let's go! In! So, oh, right. okay. need to talk about this. This is a new build that has been really terrorizing. The Showmaker's played this on the solo queue as well. It's been terrorizing. She can go in and then get the immediate reset on her dash. Once upon a time, the skills were changed as we might have a free v free here. Yeah, Lucid in position. Might need to safeguard over to Showmaker as they're looking to engage. Aiming. Ellen moves on down. Aiming's already here as well. As Wind Become Lightning does come down, but Carrier looks to be the one in trouble in the arrow. It's going to ring true. This side lanes very effectively as well. And that's going to be really important. We mentioned map control being a huge thing as, wow, uh, Kellen going to get engaged on here. Doesn't have shape splitter, but there's the ulti. Does do a fair bit, but he's still going to go down. Teleport's coming in everywhere as Faker moves on in. Showmaker also down. Reality kind of king in this game. We'll see who's going to be able to benefit the most from it. This dragon is still alive. It is 13 minutes Pressure. on these plates and for to build the gold lead. Ooh, Chains of Corruption are going to connect here as Pop Blossom comes down. Gumushi, that's a decent flak, but Luce is still on top of him. The flash forward, the Hextech Ultimatum comes down. Now Ona gets on in there. Lucid will be taken out. Carry it down to half, but look at Ona. He is an absolute monster in this fight. Only 50 Trinity Force as quickly as possible. And now the arrow. Doing a fair bit of work here. Lucid just trying to avoid this dragon killing him. Showmaker is here. Yeah, Faker on the flank. Oh no! There as well. Only just walks over, presses his smite button. Stop Showmaker, but he's not going to stop. He has got his his Lich Bane, oh, and yeah. he is cutting through these turrets. And Diana tends to win or lose before that even comes in. As Kerry is going to face check and just get kicked to his doom. He does last a little bit longer. Hextech Ultimatum coming on down there, but that is going to be Kellen getting his revenge. Kellen getting the kill is a little bit silly there. Showmaker. Yeah, there's a Moonfall as well onto Zayas. Remember, does not have his flash available. The flash forward into the Pop Blossom. And the snare comes down. Took a while, but the TF does go down. Faker does get here, though. Yeah. Charge to come through from Shelly as well. I think this That's will big. take down the turret. And there it goes. So T1. T1, I think, are pretty reliant on actually getting into the enemy backline immediately. There's a ton of great ball delivery systems, and they don't have really the setup here and decide instead to go for a cross map please and hopefully he thinks a little bit more oh that was a bit that was a bit of a weird moment as chains of corruption will connect the immediate punishment but the fate skull does come down snare on to gumi Yushu is now looking to try and hop this one out showmaker looking for him though the exhaust comes down to lower the damage but he's still in melee range hextech ultimatum still comes in but it's two kills that go down for DK. The answering kill is there from Zayas. Showmaker going down relatively low, but the Q is going to land. Under the twist of fate, it's going to leave the Diana completely exposed. And T1 will answer with a couple of kills of their own. Kingen still wanting a little bit more though, and he's just dove on top of Zayas. There's the flash, and they'll lock down the kill. Kingen still wanting to Dragon. As Ona could come over for a cheeky scan. He would like to, and he's not going to be able to secure it this time around. Second Drake. Tri triangular fan. Uh, fans, are, fans are co very cool weapons. I'm, I'm a big fan. Person. Yeah, you're well, a big fan. You could be a weapon. It's okay. The ulti does come on through from Ona, but he's not going to be able to get out of the way. Ghost. Oh, the Hextech Ultimatum is decent. The Pop Blossom comes down as well. The first kill does come through. The Lee Sin will be taken out. Shockwave. The Shockwave is gigantic. And the TF takes down the Varus in the back line as well. I think DK may have ran out of battle power, and they have T1 on the back. Faker's Shockwave will move to the Baron. And whoever makes the first move is the one that gets punished. And this time around, it's DK. And uh, this outer turret, not long for the world. That is turret number three. Now going to be taken, I think, the inner, inner round. Level free ultimate and flash, but that, that, that really is the one angle. There are a lot of squishies on T1. If you can get a heroic oh, man. Diana play. Well, okay, does come on through there. As he does find a Moonfall onto three and into the back line. Goes Lucid, but he just pops like a balloon. They cannot do anything about it. King and now having to get out of there as the dissonance damage is just gigantic. Kellen down to about one health and in goes Ona. He'll be able to take down the Nico here as Carrier diving forward. Hextech ultimatum going down. Zayas just uses him as a distraction as he tidies up absolutely everyone. And DK once again just lying on the floor. That is going to be a game, a number one Atlas. It was a tense fight, but one a big mistake from DK around the Baron is all that T1 needed, and they're going to go up 1-0 in the series. And Faker just coming in clutch.
in the end around that Baron. That is going to spell defeat for DK and a 1-0 lead for T1. Their first... All right, Zayas. The king is like, oh God, no. <laughs> no, 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 not in, not in pro play too. I was going to say, like, that is, uh, that is a gamble. Up on top of this Rift Scuttler. Takes that one down. Meanwhile, more fighting here towards the bottom side as Permafrost is going to be utilized. Owner now fighting Lucid, but this is a dangerous one. Zayas moves on down as Lucid needs to be so careful. Is Owner going to go down? No, he's not. The blue buff getting aggressive, but there is Showmaker. He doesn't have Flash though, remember, so he's likely to fall down. It's a fantastic cage. Whoa! Zayas, he gets knocked into the sky and Showmaker is trying to walk it off. Faker flashing after him. Now Kingen chasing down the Emperor. Does manage to get the slow the flash. hit. Can he find it? He has the red buff here as well as Faker trying to get out of the way. That Q just not finding the mark. As this one is there is full information over here. On the go! Yeah, Showmaker trying to clear out vision, but I don't think he's going to be able to make anything happen. No flash available. Moving on forward. Showmaker just trying to block as the Emperor's Divide does come down. He gets over the wall. The flash hook is going to ring true here for Kellen, and the cage is going to come out as well. Faker, not long for the world, and Lucid will pick Play up game. that. Yes, uh, Ghost and Flash available now as well. Right. The, this the, series, just, the gold lead has not really moved. Got a goal like in, 20 minutes. TP advantage. Yeah, let's see what they can get done here as the hook is going to connect, but it's on the carrier. The cage comes down as well, but it's not enough to stun him up. DK should be able to get themselves there here first. As well, he, he's going to be able to grab this plate as now carrier by himself. He's going to get hooked up as Lucid finding himself a stun as well, aiming just wanting to maximize the amount of plates that he can pick up. He put in from T1. Dead. Kellen knows that he's really dead, and that is going to be a kill going over to Goomer as well. going to be able to go over here. Faker, though, once he shows up. Well, Lucid going to make this one a 50-50. Let's see what can happen. It is going to be the steal away. There's so much AoE damage coming down. The Dawning Shadow, massive value. As Zayas has made his way into the fight. It's a one-for-one -one so far, but the Bane is starting to pop off. Lucid gets over the wall, and now Showmaker left for dead. No flash because he used it earlier, and it's a double kill. Diego and Cassante, it's not bad. Doesn't feel the worst. I just don't know whether it's going to be a soul that we're really going to be talking about, as there is the charge forward. The cage is going to be put down there as well. Fair bit of damage onto owner and carrier, but once again, they're not the optimal target. Still, they do get what they came here for. Forcing DK to make a decision. Yeah, and there's the flash forward. The cage is down there as well. Stun! And he's just dead. Owner taken out. That is the pick you're looking for. But this is the problem. T1, is it going to be worth it for DK if this inner turret goes down? And I just don't know because 700 gold going over. Probably to saying comes right now. Is that true? We'll, we'll have to see how the game progresses. It's going to be the second Drake going over. But again, due to the early Drake from T1, no soul point, which is something that I think they would ideally really like to have. Another four minutes, and it's not uh, even a soul. It is just soul point that they're Fight. fighting for. As Kellen now finds himself in amongst two. Showmaker and Lucid a little bit too far away. I don't know whether they're going to be able to save him, but he gets a big old shield. Showmaker flashes away, and T1 are just going to jump down on top of him. He can't click the blast cone. He's oh, running. Oh, it's a disaster. Meanwhile, the fight on the top side is also T1 favored. Faker takes down the Cassante. Lucid, I'm not sure about this one. He's trying to get his way out. Oh, dead. As Zayas is chasing after him. Vayne, pretty good at chasing you down, as it turns out, as he flush, as he tumbles forward, sorry. Oh, his, oh yeah, exactly. They know. Yeah, yeah, they see to get it. They're, like, no, 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 they're no, no, gonna no. pick this one up. Okay, so it's gonna have to be Showmaker's Smite that wins this one out. Carrier does have teleport, he can make his way back in. As is Baron, not going down anytime soon. TP, Both carrier teams behind looking them. for a little bit of an engage. As they're trying to block him off, they're going to see whether they can kill the Sejuani before this one is even a problem. But the all-out comes over the wall, it's absolutely fantastic! Again. They take down Ona! But still, Fake is able to hunt down the Cassante Showmaker once again, trying to run from Zayas. He gets himself a big old shield, but he won't find the cage. And he's on one health, the flash forward from Goomer is going to be what gets it done. And there is another team fight victory for T1 here, Lucid. Just to stop them from taking this, and yes, they take down. Let's have both of the items that do the big damages. It's also gone for the fleet footwork, not one. Uh, it's, a, it's a very it's, scary It's event. gone. Yeah, yeah it's, and that is, there, is, there is absolutely no contesting this one. It is. Oh, I don't know if they're going to be able to try and contest this. They're going to give it their all. Yeah, Teleport going to come on forward from the Cassante. They got what they wanted. Let's see whether T1 stick around for a fight. The bait cage not really doing too much here. Keeping an aggro, but going to drop it after all. Yeah. Maybe an actual 5v5. 
Piercing Darkness able to keep them very healthy in this fight as well as the Sand Soldiers go forward. That's another cage. Hook is going to come through. No one stunned though. And there's the re-engage. Kellen's down so incredibly low. And there is the pickoff. Cassante trying to get some Cassante things done, but it does not work. It's it is getting down lower and lower, aiming. Just taking pot shots here from Zayas. He's just able to walk out of the way of the burst fire. The Baron just going to be destroyed. No way for DK. It makes it so hard, especially if you are running a double front line, to actually chew through targets. And from this point on, Atlas, I think we're looking for a match point for T1 here. It is looking very likely at this stage. 8,000 gold is the lead. And T1 are now bearing down on the base. They still have two minutes of this Baron buff. As that is a nice little flash hook from Kellen. Empress Divide is going to get Faker out of the way, though. Still, oh, they do he... manage to get the flash and the ulti, but they'll sacrifice an inhibitor turret for it. He didn't have the ult. If he gets the ult faker, then he might be able to kill him, the cage. Yeah, cage does go down. They push them into it, but Kingen can't really tank them up. Glacial Prison comes down. Carrier, so incredibly tanky. Owner's going to be the first one to grab a kill in this fight. Another cage is going to work out as Lucid diving on That's board. One. He's got the vein, and Lucid now trying to tumble his way to victory, but he'll be taken out as well. And I think DK are just that little bit too far behind. T1, they do lose their top laner. He has been a hero this game, but they have four left and they have so much sustain with Gumiyushi. Not really going to matter. It seems like, as you point out, if this happened 15 minutes but Now the real final team fight is going to be upon us. As Ona taking a bit of damage there, Aiming is pretty farmed himself. He's level 16. All right, we need to see some, some real vagaring, some Cassante shenanigans, something to bring this game back. Otherwise, T1 about to bring in the match point with this Baron buff. Well, Extender Beam does no damage to these minions. You can see, okay, in goes Ona. Immediate cleanse from uh, Showmaker. And yeah, that was just that was just Ona going in. Uh, that's all that really gets them anything. And the inhibitors have oh, just not the triple in him. as well. Kellen, they know wanting oh, to find an angle. Know. They spot him out. Mega Blast Cone is something that he can possibly use for a cheeky little angle, but it's not going to be before these inhibitors have all gone down. And Kellen's still just like trying to work out what he can do. The answer is nothing, as there's the explosion onto Aiming, the primary target, and he has to go back to the fountain. Kingen's also having to dash away. It's going to leave their whole base exposed to Zayas. Yes. He'll be taken out. But even with four members, look at all of these minions. They are just gigantic. Kellen's made it to the back line, though. Next and Aiming's up. got his health right back the Nexus. Right. It's so incredibly low, and there it goes. T1, match Carrier, so we are playing AD Carry Ash. And so Ash Renata going to be that bottom lane. Try to nullify the Callista. Of course, Callista absolutely hates Ash. Frost Shot is the bane of her existence. That Still. does mean that Kingen now has an opportunity to get a lot of damage down. Q going to connect, and Zayas will be taken down. That is first blood. Gold card. Not Only going to get the cleanse. Still a nice little win there, as we do have towards top side now. The grubbies being taken. Yeah, Lucid actually taking a lot of control uh, of the jungle, although Ona does have a slight camp advantage. Feels like the good camps have been going over to the Lee Sin. Okay, Showmaker gonna spot Faker. Empress Divide's gonna push him under the turret. Spirit Rush has to be employed. And now, Ona trying to get some work done here onto Lucid, but it is just a fight for the campers. There's the flash in! Okay, Gumiyushi gonna get all of those sticks thrown into him. And the Ren does come down. The Ignite still taking the bailout. They didn't wait quite long enough, but aiming, he might be able to get it. And there it is. Now Carrier running for the hills, but he will make it. They don't know that yet. Yeah, Shattering Strike to connect onto Gumiyushi here is a bit disconnected. Crash down to come through as well. He's now aiming very slowly, trying to dance around this fight. In goes Kellen with the Fate's Call. As the pushback with the heroic charge is gorgeous. And now Showmaker getting amongst it. The Spirit Rush working out as Gumiushi desperately trying to hunt down Kellen. He'll find it, but he will die immediately. And trading behind the play, even with his ult. Yeah, and there's an equalizer not available for King and still does not matter. Like we can't actually make our way over. His owner is here. Yeah, heroic charge onto Kellen actually finds a lot of value. He's going to get that knockup. Magnus Storm comes in. Lucid going to come on back. And now Showmaker has teleported forward. Ono is burning down. He's got the bailout. But look at the AoE. It is disgusting. Gumiushi once again Maker? going completely ham. Has caps. Yeah. A lot of mercs in general here on the side of DK. All of Rotating the down. And the rumble has boarded the Shelly bus. 
And now, uh, Owner is just going to push him against this turret. He has to flash to get out of the way as Carrier. He's bailed himself out, but that is going to dissipate. Oh, no. It's going to be the second Drake by itself. Not enough if it was Sword Point, but you want to be mega consistent in getting a lead. These minions, he's trying to clear them out as best he can, but this one's down extraordinarily low. Gumiushi does have Arrow at That's the ready, big. but still, the inner turret just going to be taken. The Arrow opportunity. Dragus on the top side of the map. Oh, yeah. But I think Kingen is still having an absolutely fantastic performance on this But rumble. it is not enough just yet. This mid lane turret needs to fall. Arrow going to connect here onto the Showmaker, who does make it out. Emperor's Divide is going to connect as well. Showmaker will be taken down, aiming. Gets off the Fate's Call, so they're not going to lose too much more, but that is... Just give up these objectives so many times. Just start it up. Although, as I say, that they nearly peel off because of the ult. Yep. A lot of vision available here with the Destiny, and now Kingen going to have to flash to get himself out of the way of this. And Equalizer, it goes down, but they are just going to chain CC him to death. Showmaker tried to get over there, but it's not going to work out. And now the Blast Cone gets T1 completely formed back up again. That charm, absolutely amazing. But there is the Dragon going over. It's Faker that secures it. Exhaust onto Showmaker. He's still very dangerous, but he doesn't find the charm. And the roll will go down. Lucid is super dead. It will be taken out here by Faker. The early game just not quite able to build that snowball large enough. That's going to be Nash. Yeah, Baron going to be secured here. So 1,500 on the clock as far as that Red Bull Baron power play is concerned. Showmaker was looking for some exit kills. I just think it's going to be so difficult as he doesn't quite find the, yeah, anything at all, really. And he's just going to be taken down. They're still going. Yeah, uh, Kellen going in now. He'll be hit by an arrow. There's an equalizer. That's going to do a fair bit of work. The Fate score comes down. They at least get the twisted. For a Hill Mary fight. I'd still stand a chance. The arrow is going to go wide. Equalizer goes down. I mean, it's a lot of AoE damage, but there are not a lot of members of DK in this area. They'll do a fair bit of work. Showmaker now trying to get in there. Lucid off to the side. He'll connect a Q. But with a poppy in the area, you just cannot go in with a resonating strike. Safeguard to try and get Lucid out of there. And Showmaker, he's down to about 400. He Working out even remotely. That's two more kills going over. Well, aiming and Lucid now looking to try and find something, some sort of angle. Twist of Fate nowhere near I, at this I, point yeah. in time, but they don't know that. They can maybe, they can probably maybe kill him. He doesn't have flash. They're going to give up this uh, turret anyway, but the inip I think is really big. Conla, that one for Look how respectful Zayus is playing. Yeah, he's going to play back. Doesn't have the uh, Baron himself. Certainly good news. Does mean that uh, DK can get the push down, but uh, T1, they are definitely taking this inhibitor. Or at least taking the turret. Oh, the big Kellen, collapse. Yeah, Kellen walks over a ward, but see you can see the Ari moving wait, wait, her way in as well. Doesn't have his ult. Yeah, Kingen throwing down a very early equalizer here. Oh. And Gumiushi standing in that brush. They're just trying to keep them interested. Of course, Zayas, he cannot get down here. Doesn't even have the ult if he's going to walk into that area. You're going to connect there onto Ona. Steadfast presence at the ready. As T1, they're just looking to try and find an exit, trying to find a way out. DK trying to find a way in. There is the engage. Magnus Storm pulls Ona back in. Fate's Call going to be utilized here is now Showmaker. He's fishing, trying to find an opportunity. Empress Divide, it connects only onto Aiming, who will now just try and kill the rest of his team because it was a fantastic hostile takeover. And now Lucid gets into the backline. Carry is the last man standing, and it's King and finally making this rumble work in a team fight. I'm pretty sure Zayas could have made it if he just walked over at some point, but no! T1! But if you just keep taking pot shots, keep taking damage, eventually... Battle Rumble ruin his day. No, he is he is doing damage. And okay, into the back line goes Lucid, and then out of the back line goes Lucid, and he's now hit by an arrow. Fate's call as DK know that they need to start this fight. Faker, he finds the Rumble with the Empress Divide, but Showmaker's also going to be able to take down the Twist of Fate. Look at these health bars, they're so low on DK's side. It's only Showmaker. There you see him. I didn't even notice him die, I'm not going to lie. Head in his hands. Okay, Zayas. Oh. In. There it is, the engage, and Zayas is going to be taken down. So T1, once again, have to deal with uh, without their Twisted Fate. I still think that it's multiple turrets going to be traded for the TF. It's going to be mid in at least, but they, they're going to look for the exact same play. Yeah, no, it is. It's look already, at the they're not going to get the work done. And now DK, they were thinking about trying to collapse on top of him once again, but this Drake has been started up. And it's probably going to go down to the wave. Yeah. DK. And going to come on through. And now the destiny has dissipated. Zayas now looking for that flank himself. Kellen taking 50% down as Faker 
He's going to get himself out of there. It should be the Drake. A possibility. The secure for Ona. And they deny the soul. And now, can they actually win the fight as well as everyone's in the Thunderdome? Lucid is going to try and kick away the Azir. The Equalizer just not doing quite as much as it wants to do. And he's stuck inside the pit with nowhere to go. And DK, they're now going to get flanked by Baker. He finds two with the Empress Divide. And that is going to be that. That will be the 3 0 as welcome back, T1. They will go to the lower bracket final in Jumpshill next weekend. DK, they had an incredible series against Gen G, but it seems like tonight that magic remains only in place when they face that team. T1, the spatch of them in a free zero sweep. Thank you very much, guys. This is Deer for the post-match interview translation with T1, who advanced to the lower bracket finals after a 3-0 victory against D Plus Kia. We'll talk to all the players. Please welcome Zeus, owner, Baker, Gumayushi, Keria, and head coach Koma. Congratulations! First off, with Zeus, with today's victory, you advanced to the lower bracket finals at Kespo Dome. How do you feel? I feel like today, if we were to lose, I feel like it would be our first time getting eliminated so early. And I felt like, you know, when we get into it, we wouldn't actually lose, so I think I'm just really relieved. In game two, we saw a top bin victory after 1,900 days. And many only spoke about how good she is, and she was definitely a nuisance for the opponent. What were you looking for in a Vayne versus Ksanti matchup? When it comes to Vayne, you know, I didn't really have much thought into it, but when Dindin played Vayne against Gen G, I think I saw how good his performance was, that's what really inspired me to play her today. I feel like if the team has a really fed Bane, it would be a really hard uh, target to deal with for the opponent. So Gumayushi, as an AD carry, how was Bane's, uh, Zeus's Bane? I feel like just based on the comp, it was just really easy for Bane. And it must have been really fun. So was it really fun? Zeus? Uh, yeah, I tried to have as much fun as I can. So it seems like the team has full faith in your TF. What makes you prioritize TF so consistently? He is pretty decent in the laning phase and with itemization, uh, TF's value actually goes up quite high. So as long as you are able to survive the laning phase, I think uh, you just look for a yellow card uh, opening. And you will face Hanwha Life Esports once again in Jamsu. Yeah, we lost against them. Uh, it was a 3-0, a very helpless one. And I feel like this time around, we will be able to win. Next up, we'll have Owner. It was such an important match. How does it feel to defeat D plus Kia and secure a trip to Jamsu? Yeah, D plus Kia has been doing so well and we were definitely prepared. I'm just really relieved that we're able to win and get a 3-0 victory and we'll make sure that we're ready for the next one. Did you expect a quick 3-0? After the game, the first game, I think, yeah, I did think that we would be able to finish the match with a 3-0. Feels like Zen Zhao is high on the tier list as of the playoffs. Your performance with him was of course on point as well. How would you rate Zen Zhao currently? I feel like rather than what happens in the early game, I mean, what really determines the game is team fighting, and Zen Zhao happens to be a really useful pick in terms of team fighting. And so T1 has always managed to advance to the finals whenever given the chance. So what are your thoughts? We get to meet Hana Life Esports again? And we are on our way to get our revenge.
Next up, we'll have Faker. Yesterday, Faker, April 6th, marked your 11th anniversary since debut. Congratulations! And along with the very first 5,000 assists in the LCK, you have secured a victory. How do you feel? I feel like every spring, I get congratulated a lot, so I'm very grateful. And with the 5,000 assists, I'm sure that a lot of the support are definitely <laughs> following my footsteps into achieving uh, my milestones. So I'd like to give them some credit. And so with the D plus Kia match today, uh, how did you guys manage to prepare? I feel like with the limited time that we had, since the last match, I think we just tried to communicate and focus on the teamwork overall. In game one, your Oriana was left open. And the opponent, after 1,459 days, picked Diana. What was your game plan? So I believe Diana was uh, had made an appearance in the EU recently, and I think I did predict that there would be a chance that, that I would see Diana against Oriana. So my main plan was to play more defensively. And with the game one victory, your Oriana has an undefeated record with 12 wins now. How incredible. What are your thoughts? Are you confident with Oriana? You know, regardless of any champions, I'm always confident. When it comes to Oriana, I think it's all due to my team or teammates doing so well for me. And for the last stage before the finals, you have a rematch against Hanwha Life Esports. What are your predictions? Like last night, before I went to sleep, you know, for some reason, I had a real weird feeling that I will win and get the title. So I want to make sure that we get our revenge and really just take it home. And I want to promise the fans that it will be a good match in the next uh, next match and the rest of the playoffs. And Gumayushi, you were full of confidence at the walk walkout. So did you predict a 3-0 today? No, I didn't really think about how the score was going to be. But I definitely wanted to secure a victory today. I wanted to make it to the venue, and I also want to make an appearance at MSI, so I really am very grateful for today's victory. And T1 always had a positive head to head record against D plus Kia, but DK also had a good momentum, so what did you focus on today? And with the head-to-head -head record, uh, I noticed that we didn't even drop a match against them in the past three years. So, you know, I was a little worried about, you know, the D plus Kia fans. But we were also quite desperate for today's uh, victory, so... And in Game 3, Ash had an insane kill participation. You were a part of 17 kills and had a massive influence in the game. Since Keria had been on the Ash duty all along, how did you guys end up playing her as an AD carry? Ash is something that I really like and I'm also confident with, and Keria has always been playing Ash, so the opponents always were wary of his Ash, so I think that was something that we were able to turn into our strength today. Ever since T1 secured this exact roster you have today, you have never failed to advance to the finals. So what are your thoughts going into the lower finals? I believe it will be a fun experience. I always, ha always have a romance regarding going to big venues. I really want to meet all the fans. It's going to be a big venue, so it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll move on to Keria. You have de defeated D plus Kia, who had a great momentum. How do you feel to walk in your place at Chamsu? 
I'm really happy that we're able to get a quick 3-0. Keria, you pulled out Camille, Sichuani, and Renata Glass, some of the picks that you haven't really been using in spring. So what was the vision for these bot picks? Since we are on a different patch uh, compared to what we were in spring, so there are a lot of changes in draft. So I think that's what we were trying to consider in drafting. And now you will face the Viper and Delight Duo at the lower finals. So what do you think will be crucial in this bot matchup? On a Life Esports, bot duo is very good in terms of team fighting. I think the only way is for us to play better than them. So any message to the T1 fans out there? You know, whenever Faker talks about something in League of Legends, a uh, hundred out of a hundred times, he's always right. So we'll make sure that what he said today comes true. And we'll make sure that we put in our all to make it to the finals and take the title. Now, we'll talk to head coach Koma. You predicted a 3-0 score in the pre-match interview. Congratulations! How does it feel to advance to the lower bracket finals? Yeah, with today's victory, we were able to secure the lower bracket finals, and I'm very happy we will make, uh, we will make sure that we win the next match to make it to the finals. What advice did you give your players today? You know, rather than giving them any advice, I think we were just going to, we were just trying to go over all the different picks. And since it's a best of five, regardless of a loss or dropping a game, that they shouldn't worry too much or dwell too much about it, and that we will make sure that we are prepared for the upcoming game. And what would you like to say to your hardworking players? I just always want to say thank you to my players. They always put in their everything. And I also want to say thank you to all our staff that have been working so hard in the scene. And you will now face Hano Life Esports at the lower finals. So how would you prepare for this match? Lately, when we prepared for the match, we had about two to three days, and now we have a lot more time than that, so I believe that we have so many things that we prepared overall throughout the season, so I want to make sure that we're able to display good performance so that it leaves no regret. Congrats again, and we hope to see you play your hearts out in the lower bracket